What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am Ian and today we're going to be going over episode two. <clears throat> <clears throat> My voice cracked. <clears throat> <clears throat> and today we're going to be going over episode two of season three Drive to Survive on Netflix. If you have not already seen episode one of reaction and review that I did on the last video, then I will drop a link down below. Go ahead and click that so that you can get caught up to speed, especially if you haven't actually seen the episode. Now, without any further ado, let's get into it. You know, I've had 10 weeks sitting at home not doing it. Teams are going to be race rusty on the strategy. Those uh, three days of practice that every team got are, are now gone because you haven't been able to, to actually be behind a, a car, not just the drivers, but the engineers, the pit crew, the team principals, the designers. Uh, literally, no one was able to be around the cars. I mean, everyone's going to be rusty. And I think that this year will create some different scenarios. Was put in charge of the Red Bull Formula One team and won four championships. Ooh. Red Bull won uh, the four years prior to Mercedes with Hamilton and Toto just coming in and sweeping for the next six years and they're going for their seven. Christian over at Red Bull, the team principal, they're, they're really gunning because everyone's so rusty and haven't been around their cars. They actually, he actually feels like they have an even better chance there's a lot of intrigue at the moment around the Mercedes. Whoa. Mercedes is so fucking smart. To develop a system that can control the DRS and angle of the tires for a higher amount of grip while also steering, wow. That is stupidly impressive. The DAS system that they're running on their car, the steering system, falls into a very gray zone. <laughs> because that system is so good and so, I guess, ahead of its time that nothing is written about it specifically. But uh, we'll protest it today. With this rivalry of, of Red Bull and Mercedes, uh, Christian Horner brought it up to the FIA and... We tried to slow them down with a DAS, but no luck. Much to his dismay, they have cleared it as it is legal through at least to the end of that season, this season of the 2020. <laughs> Oh, it happened again. Albin's trying to go on the outside around Hamilton and around one of the last corners gets hit by Hamilton, just like it happened in Brazil in the 2019 season. But this time, I don't know whose fault it is. I don't know if Hamilton's going to get penalized. Lewis Hamilton is given a five second penalty. And all of a sudden, I go over the line. Lando Norris with the fastest lap of the race. Lando, the gap to Hamilton was full. Wow. And because of that five second penalty, McLaren with Norris driving right behind him was told about this. And on the last lap of the race, he got the fastest lap of the race and closed the gap to 4.8 seconds, which means he beat Hamilton for the podium and got his first podium. From one act, it can affect so many different aspects and teams. I can't wait to watch these things live. Essentially, I learned that in order for any of these teams to survive, especially the smaller ones, like the independent ones, like Williams Racing, the races need to happen. They could lose their funding, they could lose their sponsorships, they're not getting income, the races gen uh, generate revenue. Like, it's insane that I didn't even think of this. But now everyone is back, it's July, Everyone's there for Austria. It's the first actual race of the 2020 season. All preparations have been made for safety measures. Everyone is in masks and it is polar opposite to what had happened literally the episode before. And then they were talking to Alex Albon, the other Red Bull driver, just about like the mindset and kind of like what needed to be different. And he was talking about having just a more aggressive mindset because of what had happened to him, specifically in Brazil against Hamilton, when he got hit by Hamilton trying to go around the outside. 
And he said this year he just needed to be more aggressive in order to be able to complete something like that. If that you close. think and the driver next that to you was or in problem, front of you or behind you is better, fuel, you will lose. When they try to overtake you, you'll move out of the way. When they go around you, you'll move slower. When they are in front of you, you're not going to be the aggressor and try to get around them. You are going to let them have their way and they will see that very quickly and they will exploit it every time and you will lose. And it's this mentality of, it's not that you have to think you are the best, but you have to stop thinking that everyone there is better. No one is better. Everyone is at the top of their game. And it's that aggressor mindset that they have to have or they will not survive as drivers. And that's all we got for today, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Reaction Review. This was again on episode two of season three, F1 Drive to Survive on Netflix. Go ahead and watch the episode if you haven't already. And uh, please, if you have dissenting opinions, go ahead and drop those in the comments so that we can argue because let's face it, the pandemic is still here. We've got nothing else to do really. So go ahead, dissent away down there in the comments and until next time, stay safe.